Welcome to 5195. Most of my students call me Dr. Kim. I'm excited to teach this course. Believe it or not, I'm passionate about technical editing and I'm hoping that I can convey a little bit of that passion um, to each of you and maybe inspire you a little bit about this as a profession and as an activity. So, of course, you can read the official description of the course in the catalog. But what I'll say briefly is that this is a course where we're going to focus on professional editorial standards uh, and practices, technologies that are used by people who edit technical content. Let's get going. To help you understand how the course will work, I want to do three things in this lecture. First, I'll present the goals of the course. Second, I'll describe the major assignments you'll complete along with the philosophy behind them. And third, I'll help you get to know a little bit about me. So let's start with goals. All the goals of this course are designed to build the critical editing skills needed by professional technical communicators. The first objective is for you to know enough about the profession of tech editing to be able to describe it to somebody else. I want to help you learn what career possibilities exist and what roles or responsibilities are involved. The second objective is for you to learn to use editorial terminology and to understand trends as far as tech editing is concerned within technical communication. The third objective is for you to apply what you learn as you complete tasks and course assignments that involve all levels of editing. There'll be more about this in module one. Understanding levels of edit is one of the most important things that you gain in the course. So the fourth objective is for you to learn to edit both text heavy and text light content. Techcom audiences need good content, whether it's made up of text, or diagrams, or audio, or video. The fifth objective is for you to practice using current tools and technologies. In particular, we'll focus on the use of features in Microsoft Word, but there are far more advanced tools that are used in industry, and you'll learn a little bit about them as well. The sixth and final objective is for you to practice communicating with the owners of technical content. The editor-author relationship can be problematic, so you'll learn some techniques for better managing that relationship. Now let's talk about the course assignments in just a little detail. The table lists the major assignments you'll complete in the course, along with the learning objectives they support, and the way in which each contributes to your course grade. Your first major project is a structural edit of primarily non-text-based material. You'll work as a team of two or three to complete a comprehensive edit project of primarily text-based material. You'll also complete a copy editing test, a reflective memo, several sets of editing exercises from the required workbook, RPW, and finally, you'll submit weekly discussion posts and a few smaller activities. You'll find details about every assignment on Canvas, including the criteria by which I judge your performance. Please pay attention. At the beginning of each module on Canvas, you'll find a module overview. That's where I provide guidance on completing the assignments for that module or week. I think it's important that you understand a little about my teaching philosophy. Maybe that way you can better understand the goal of assignments in the course. The foundation of my philosophy comes from work done by a researcher named David Kolb, who studied how adults learn at work. What he found is captured in something called Kolb's experiential learning cycle. The fundamental insight here is that learning happens through multiple cycles never occurs in a straight line or a straight uphill climb. Many people believe you have to choose between experience or theory when you want to gain knowledge or skills, but that choice actually represents a false dichotomy. Let me explain with an example. Let's say you're a swimmer and you want to learn to compete in the 100 meter butterfly. You enter an event, have the actual experience of competing, 
you place fifth. If you quit now or you just keep entering more races, you don't learn that much. You've got to continue to the next phase of the cycle for learning to occur. After your experience, you have to think back. What exactly happened in that race? Reflecting on your experience is necessary if you're committed to learning. But it's also true if you get stuck in reflection, you're not going to learn that much. Instead, you've got to advance to the next learning phase. You might talk to your coach who theorizes or conceptualizes that your lost time at the start and your turn technique slowed you down during the race. He explains why and how you might change your technique. The coach's idea is only theory unless you advance to the experimentation phase of learning. You get in the pool, you try out some new techniques to turn, you do some drills for getting off the block more quickly, you get some practice. Even though you've learned a lot, if you've gone this far through the cycle, if you stop with experimentation, you won't really know what you've learned yet. Instead, you have to start over with the first phase again. You compete in another race. You have another experience. You might win or not. If you're serious about learning, you'll keep repeating the cycle by reflecting on the most recent experience and then conceptualizing why things happened the way they did and experimenting and experiencing again. What does all this mean for a student in TECM 5195? I'd say first, it means the assignments that I planned for you require you to move back and forth between thinking and doing. Most people are more comfortable with one than the other, but the quality of both of them matter for learning. Second thing it means, I believe learning is a cyclical process, not an outcome. If you focus only on grades, that's an outcome, you're going to be frustrated and you won't learn as much. Third, I expect you to take risks. Risks make you uncomfortable. Sometimes you're going to fall down. Failure is actually necessary for learning. I'm going to do everything I can to make it safe for you to fail. And finally, I think this means that it's an advantage to have a coach to guide you through the learning process. Not that you couldn't learn by yourself, but it's easier when you have someone else to help you conceptualize what's going on. So that's my job. I give you as much individual coaching as I can, but of course there are limits to what anyone can offer. I also ask you to coach each other. That should lead to deeper knowledge for both of you. Let me close with just a little bit of information about me. So I trace my passion for editing back to my love of books. I was consumed by books from an early age. My mother was so tired of my constant request for her to read to me Back in the early 1960s, she bought a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, similar to the one I'm showing you here, and then recorded herself reading my books. My passion for written language eventually led me to graduate school, where I studied linguistics and tech writing. That's when I first got paid as an editor. I helped researchers at LSU's vet school with their scientific articles and grant proposals. I earned my Ph.D. from LSU in 1990 after completing a dissertation. I did some research on applications of linguistics to professional writing. My first job as a professor was at Auburn University in their English department. In 1992, I began work as a professor and researcher at the Air Force's postgraduate school called AFIT. In 1997, I joined the business school at the University of Alabama, where I stayed for 19 years. During that time, I served as the editor of an IEEE research journal for 10 years. And while at Bama, I also did some administrative work and some other things that required technical editing. In 2016, I joined the Department of TechCom here at UNT. So now you know a little bit about the course goals, you know about the major assignments, how you'll earn your grade in the course, and you even know a little bit about me. Let's dig in.